What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush, Let's Talk Jets. I hope everybody's doing excellent and enjoying your summer. I cannot believe Labor Day is a week away, which is insane. I also can't believe training camp has come and gone for the New York Jets, which is, which is a very exciting time, if we're being honest with you. This has been an off-season of a lot of anticipation, a lot of questions, and slowly but sure, this team has answered them. And I'll start with Coach Sala. As most of you know, if you follow this channel, I'm not his biggest supporter. I have a lot of questions about him, his staff, and how he's handled things. And I got to give him credit, man. This training camp has been a lot different for a variety of reasons. It seems like it's very well planned out. A lot of a lot of thought into how he's going to handle the first string, second string, third string, the quarterbacks. And that's something I think last year there was so much newness where you had, you know, the, you know, the one of the biggest stars in football joining your team in Aaron Rodgers, a new offensive coordinator, Hard Knocks was there. I think it was a little bit of chaos and everybody just getting assimilated to what was going on. And then the season took off. And it was just like you had you need a chance to digest and recap and self-assess what went right, what went wrong. And you know, when you look at the training camps, you're kind of sometimes you wondered, are they physical enough? Are they hard enough? You know, are they getting enough work in? And Sal's approach this offseason or this training camp has been impressive, where there's a there's a rhyme and reason behind it. And this team looks like it's prepared where the last preseason game, based on the work against the Giants, you're like, you know, they don't need to play. If they're extensively playing against the Giants in a joint practice, there's no sense putting the guys out on Saturday. You let the second and third string guys go at it. Maybe there's some roster spots still up for grabs. But uh, I, I thought it was great, man. And the other question you had, too, was will the offensive linemen all play together, all starting five? That came to fruition, which is great news. You saw good things out of Tyrod Taylor. I mean, the Hassan Reddick thing is what it is at this point. But you look at – I'm looking at what's on the field right now, and you you got to feel good about the preparation – the other X factor to all of this, I think, is the accountability and uh, leadership tone that Aaron Rodgers set, where I think he watched his team go through all the highs and lows last year and realized there's a void. There's, there are some, definitely some voids where he had to step up in his game a little bit. Well, he, while he became a part of the team last year, but I think some of the guys were starstruck. Now he became a lot more of a vocal leader. You saw the way he handled the situation with Tippman with the snaps, but he was vocal with the offensive line with the receivers, the running backs, and he knew what buttons to push where he said, you know what, Brees, you've got to be more of a leader. Garrett, you should be more of a leader. And he, he even pushed buttons on the defense too. And then the accountability was just all around where the standard was set very high, where if things weren't done right, people were pissed off and they demanded, they wanted perfection. And that's something I think in the past this team has lacked as well, where it was not a, a rudderless ship, but it kind of seemed like that, where when the shit hit the fan, the quarterback couldn't help him out. Zach Wilson was lost or whatever else. But now that Rodgers is, you know, he's acclimated to the Jets and this whole organization and, the, you know, the, the team, he can be more vocal, more powerful, and his word, resonate, his word resonates more. No idea why I can't speak tonight. But um, overall, I think this team is ready to go, man. They are locked and loaded. For the most part, they're relatively healthy. Knock on wood. Get through Saturday's game. And then now it's just a matter of, you know, if you're looking at what you want to see next, is try to get Mike Williams ready as fast as possible. There's still a couple weeks left of the season. you got to figure he's probably going to be on a pitch count. But you look at Alan Lazard's had a really good camp. Gibson, you have Garrett Wilson. There's other guys. Hopefully you get Corley involved and Conklin. But that's probably the missing piece in terms of the offense. On defense, like the Reddick thing, to me, I honestly believe he'll probably show up next week or right before, right before the season starts. He doesn't want to miss actual regular season game checks. I think at some point he just wants to play. But like Williams, he's going to be on a pitch count. He'll come in. He's got to be, he got to pass physical, prove he's in shape, learn his teammates, learn the defense, learn so many things, and then just you know get in football shape. So um, overall, this is exciting times, and the Jets, to my opinion, should be you know they should be one of the favorites when the AFC East. You respect the Buffalo Bills, but the Jets, if you look on both sides of the ball, I keep saying it all all season, they have a tremendous amount of legitimate game breaking talent. It's all there to be had. And any expectation less than when the AFC East to start is crazy to me. You're talking 11, 12 wins. Every week, they should have a chance to win football games when you have one of the best defenses in football, a legit running game, and an all-time great quarterback. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to be a top-five quarterback. He can be a top-10, top-12 quarterback. And this team is going to be ridiculously dangerous. So in terms of preparation, this team has got no excuses. I think they've done a really good job of getting prepared. You know, according to a lot of players, this has been the hardest training camp they've been in. And I think that's awesome. I think Sal realized we need a different message here. You know, the whole, not country club atmosphere, but more like laxed, you know, everything is fine my mindset kind of went away. We're like, listen, we're going to earn this. Everybody keeps putting us down. We keep coming up short. We've got to change our message and change our mindset. 
And I think it's going to pay off. I think this team is motivated. They're ready. And they have that, that confidence, that swag. Where like, they're going to prove a lot of people wrong and kind of, kind of flex their muscles like they wanted to last year. So, uh, again, this is all on paper. You, you hopefully it translates to week one. But I will say this for week one. They're playing probably one of the hardest teams that you're going to play all year long on the road on the night football. To me, it's like the expectation is you want to see a great game, try to find a way to win it. If they lose it, I'm not going to be, whoa, it, the season's over kind of thing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. To me, it's like the Jets can go on a run right after that week one game to make a lot of, you know, make, rack off a, a series of wins. So it's funny to already see people like, well, if they don't beat the 49ers, they've proven nothing. Your, your season isn't determined week one. It's determined at the end of the season. So you, if you, whatever happens in week one, win or lose, win, you celebrate, it's good. Doesn't define you. Lose doesn't define you. It's a series of games, man. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'm excited. This is probably the most excited I've legitimately been in a long time. While I, I did buy, in, buy into the hype last year, this year you literally see like the potential of this team, especially on both sides of the ball. It's, it's, it's just very exciting, man. So hope you guys are well. We'll be streaming all kinds of stuff. I think prime time is going to the 49er game, so I'll get somebody to stream it with me. And uh, we'll go from there. Hope you guys have a good night. Talk to you later.